I spent a lot of my gaming time over the last 5 plus years duking it out against all manner of foes using the most powerful weapon of them all. No, not that. Yes, that! Cards! And in that time, two of my favourite card based battle games have been Feria and Slay the Spire. With Rogue Book, those worlds are colliding. Well, to be more precise, developer Abracam has brought its Feria universe across to the deck builder genre. The nods to Slay the Spire are clear in many aspects of the game design, and while Rogue Book doesn't quite reach the same dizzying gameplay heights, its dual hero battle system has some really clever elements, its presentation is fantastic, and the premise that you're trapped within Feria's law book is used to good effect. And in that book. It's a whole new world. One of Rogue Book's most interesting points of differentiation is its overworld exploration. Every map starts out with large swathes of blank parchment, and it's only by using brushes and ink pots that you can reveal what's on each tile. As you paint, you'll come across opportunities to draft more cards, to transmute existing cards, and to build up your in-battle energy reserves. You'll discover piles of gold that can be spent at each chapter's shop, you'll collect relics that can potentially power up your game plan, and you might even come across standalone events and mythical creatures. Working out how best to gather and use ink makes for an absorbing layer of overworld strategy. Get back here! Each enemy encounter, meanwhile, is an opportunity to test the cards, abilities, buffs and modifiers you've cobbled together so far. How well does your strategy fit together, and how well can you take advantage of the two heroes you've chosen at the start of the run? Can you deal with multiple foes or work around status effects? And you have enough lethality to topple enemies that steadily build their power. There's generally a lot to keep in mind, especially as the row of relics and talents at the top of the screen gets longer and longer. I can't even see what this one is. Your perks fundamentally inform your choice of cards to draft, as well as how to approach any given fight. Even the cards in your deck can be modified thanks to Roebook's gem system. These gems give you extra block and draw a card, respectively, Shiny. while this one will help you steadily increase a hero's power. Very well. Cleverly utilising gems can have a massive impact on your deck's power level, and I really enjoyed looking for build-defining synergies. Rogue Book's turn-based battle system has many layers. Like Slay the Spire, you'll spend energy to play cards, you'll build up block to mitigate incoming damage, and you'll point attacks at enemies. More uniquely, you'll also deploy allies into the battlefield, some of which offer up unique benefits while others simply do damage at the end of every turn. The design element I find most compelling, however, is the front and back dynamic for the two heroes. Swapping their positions is baked into many of the cards, and it's integral to success. Ranged cards cost one less if the relevant hero is at the back, for instance, while melee is the same for the front. Swapping heroes can also help avoid debuffs and trigger effects, while ending the turn with a particular hero at the front is a big part of the strategy, as they're the one that will take any damage. Some heroes utilise a specific position well too. Being at the front gives Shara a boost to her attack power, for instance. But if she's paired with Cypher, you may want to end turns with him in the lead. Not only does he have higher native health, but any damage he takes adds to his rage meter, which, when full, allows him to play a supercharged version of one of his cards. Each hero leans into a distinct approach to combat, and while it's fun building a winning deck with cards from two different pools, Roguebook's heroes aren't all that mechanically interesting. I didn't want to explore Cypher's rage mechanic in the same way I became obsessed with orb strategies for the defect in Slay the Spire, for instance. Many of Roguebook's best ideas feel game-wide, rather than hero-driven. Compounding this, having cards from two heroes makes aiming for a narrow strategy particularly difficult. You're rewarded for having more cards in your deck, too, with talent choices unlocked at certain thresholds, and this is very much a mixed blessing. With this style of game, the more cards you draft, the more watered down your strategy will inevitably become. Deciding how large your deck should be is an interesting push and pull each run, but having rewards tied to larger decks doesn't necessarily make Rogue Book a better game. After you beat Rogue Book once, you'll get access to New Run Plus, 
This epilogue has 15 levels of difficulty to work through and a whole host of modifiers to unlock that will radically alter each run. Your lead hero might take damage each time he or she plays a card, or the back enemy may always start stealthed. It's an interesting approach, but I found myself wishing each row was unlocked at once, as opposed to unlocking each modifier individually, as some were much more appealing to attempt than others. The higher the epilogue level you clear, the more pages you're awarded, and these are spent on significant metagame upgrades, like boosting the starting health of your heroes, adding more energy wells to each map, and increasing the likelihood of rarer cards or treasures dropping. It's a significant endgame component, but it's still a shame Roguebook doesn't have anything outside New Game Plus. I'd have loved an additional palette cleanser mode, like daily challenges or custom runs. Roguebook's positional gameplay makes for a really fun combat puzzle, but the downside of the two hero system is that player strategy feels less focused than the best the genre has to offer. I enjoyed trying to combine hero abilities in unexpected ways, but the bespoke hero mechanics often weren't compelling enough to really elevate that. Even so, Roguebook is an entertaining new take on the deck builder genre, and its new ideas and lovingly realised world make it well worth a look. For more from this genre, check out our Slay the Spire review and our Monster Train review. And for everything else, you're in the right place. IGN. Time for some tea.